If you guys remember in my last Q&A video, I mentioned that these days I am doing some interviews to hire interns. After that, I got a lot of requests to my LinkedIn and Facebook asking to do a video about how to prepare for an interview, especially how to prepare for an internship interview, how to prepare and how to face the interview. So I'm going to explain that today, but this video mainly not focus about the intern, but you can use that for a software engineer and senior engineer as well. If you want, I can do a different video for each level, like how to prepare a software engineer interview, how to prepare senior engineer interviews, how to take lead and even architect as well. But since I got the request for internship, my, my main focus here about the internship, but as I said, you can like do to uh, apply this for some higher level as well. So let's see how to prepare for an interview and also how to face that interview before i explain that i must say thank you for your feedback and also comments i'm seeing uh, some growing comment count thank you very much for that feedback and encouragement and also if you're not subscribed yet please go ahead and subscribe so there are so many new things coming in this channel and also if you like this video click the thumbs up button and write some comment so that will be encourage me to do the next video let's assume now you applied for an internship and now you get a call saying at hey, this date this time you have interview this can be physical interview but thanks for covid most of first level interview now we are doing online so that means this can be a remote interview as well if it is a remote interview make sure you have a less noisy or no noisy environment no noise is the best and also you have a good lighting your camera is working your microphone is working it's clear sounds and everything it is better before the interview if you can make a video call to someone some of your friend and make sure your mic and your video and your lights and everything is perfectly fine and if you don't have a clear background if you don't have if you if your uh, room is not tidy it's better to use the blurry background effect so you can like blur out your background so then the interview panel or someone who joined to the call won't see your cluttered background or a cluttered room but if not if you have a clear background clear area so that would be okay and sound is the most important thing so make sure you don't have a noise so your microphone is working fine that is a remote if it is a physical interview it is better you be there at least 15 to 30 minutes before why because you are sometimes maybe nervous maybe you like when you get used to the environment when you get used to the people when you observe how things works there then probably it may calm you down and more than that maybe you are sweating maybe you are like kind of uh, tired maybe your hair is not nicely combed or maybe your shirt or maybe your dress is not perfectly uh, suitable so you can ask for a visitor washroom and you can go and like kind of a, like get a little dressed up before your interview if you you can do that if you go there like a 15 to 30 minutes early don't try to go to the, there like five minutes before that can be like make you nervous as well as that can be like kind of uh, stress you out now everything ready let's assume interview started most of the time 99 percent of the time first question would be tell us about you uh, introduce yourself uh, explain about you something like that one way or the other they're giving you an opportunity to explain you or introduce yourself keep in mind this is a very very important question why because this is the very first time you're making a connection with your interviewer the or a panel so this is very important because other side of the table is a human being as a human we have a little weakness that we are going to judge things based on how things goes so therefore when you introduce yourself they are going to start judging you they are going to you are going to make the first impression about you on their mind so make sure it's a positive so whether your positivity your negativity your energy your attitude your communication everything they are going to see very very first time so make sure you score as much as you can then they start the interview with a very positive vibe i'm not going to say that that time they're going to decide that they are not going to hire you or they are going to hire you but this is a possibility they see the energy of about you they see the positivity of you so maybe they are going to decide to like kind of a give some marks and hire you on down the line if you even miss some question or something it won't be much matter if you make that positive vibe properly so therefore make sure you practice well to face this question but don't don't kind of memorize that i have enough experience people come and tell something doesn't relevant 
So let's say you are going to XYZ company for interview, right? I'm interviewing you for XYZ company. People come and say, hey, I'm really like to work on the ABC company because it was my childhood dream and so and so. No, this is XYZ company, not the ABC company. So don't do that mistake. So don't have to memorize things. Then that just, just like naturally explain who are you. I would say limit answer for this question for like one to two minutes. So there you can like kind of uh, make this answer for three categories one just tell a little bit about you where you from where you studied and so and so and probably something not mentioned in the cv or something little beyond the cv and the second thing tell you academic milestone if you are a batch top if or if you have a, some highest mark or if you uh, were like mem some some active members or some some kind of uh, open source group or something which is the academic milestone especially what is relevant to the job and also if you are not like even though not relevant to job like if you are a like higher superstar in the sport or something you can mention those and also like at the end tell a little bit about your uh, like how you're going to spend your uh, free time like how like whether what are your what are your hobbies little bit about that don't don't spend like minutes or two to do that like 15 seconds probably like i love photography or i do music on my free time or something like that why because this is a type you're introducing yourself you tell that who you are so then probably the interview panel make a nice connection between you and them because there are something maybe in common so then it can open up to you to make a nice dialogue and then even your stress so it like, like a little bit helps you because they're going to start a friendly conversation with you and the second part is be prepared for some problem solving here when it comes to interns we usually don't care what language you specialized in we don't expect you to be specialized in a java or a python or a node.js or something what we are using because we are looking for software engineer interns what you need to master is software engineering not a product or not a language so we may ask some questions like kind of a generic question from something like uh, i mean uh, some people ask technical question in internship interview but some people don't ask Personally, I don't expect you to be master on any language or any language concept, but I looking for that something whether you are you know some software engineering fundamentals and whether you can apply those to solve some problem. For example, like uh, you have an array with the ten thousand numbers, how you can remove the duplicate. So there we check like how how you like how, what is your understanding about the data structures, different data structures, what is the duplicate, duplication, elimination techniques you have and so and so sometimes probably people might ask sorting filtering kind of uh, traversing through trees kind of a basic uh, fundamental things but not some in detail language concept or something like that especially in the internship interview the most important thing is this is not an exam so if you don't remember everything just tell what you remember so that's totally fine for example let's say you get a question about what is a double OP concept? Oh, what are the qualities of double OP? Oh, explain some uh, real world scenario about the double OP. Let's say you don't remember everything like a polymorphism, inheritance, encapsulation, everything. If you remember like two, yeah, one is polymorphism, another one is inheritance, and like I think there are two or three more. I don't exactly remember. So and so. So then, so that would be like you're saying that you're showing that you're truthful and you're not going to cheat or you are not kind of worrying about you're missing something or something like that. So and also this tell it give you an idea, it give an idea to the panel that you learn this and you go through this, but maybe you not remember now. It's totally fine. This is not an exam. Usually problem solving questions can come in a three different categories. First, probably they are looking for something like uh, subject related questions, like for example, as I said about eliminating duplicates or sorting something, uh, something like that, which is a directly with the subject. And there are other questions can be something like a logical thinking, how to how you can logically think and build a solution. Uh, for example, let's say you get a question something like how long it take to apply red color to the every gate in your area. This is a, like you can give a exact answer because it depends so many factors. So some, some I have seen some candidate getting like a demotivated or like uh, confused with this type of question. How I can answer this because I don't know how many gates you are not saying size of the gate you are not saying anything you are just asking how long it take to apply red color to every gate in your area. So we ask that question to see your approach to solve a problem. You may don't have answer but this is totally fine at least without giving up you should tell something how you can approach this type of thing. For example you can say 
I would like first get the kind of a stance about how many gate, how many houses in my area, and some houses may don't have gates, and some houses may be apartments, so they don't have gates. So each house. So then approximately I get some person that like 80 percent houses have gate. This is kind of my assumption. And then like when the houses are not in the same places, so I have to the gate doesn't move to me. I have to move to the gate. So that means I have to factor some kind of transportation media as well as a transportation time. It is just not the about the time you take to paint a gate. You are to paint a gate maybe take ten minutes. But to walk to the next gate maybe take other thirty minutes, so kind of I need to factor those things, and also for example if you are uh, like uh, painting all the gates in a single lane, for a when up until I go to the last gate I have to carry all the paints uh, like what need to be what need to uh, paint all the gates. For example, if I have a fifty gate. But when you go to from the first gate to second gate, I have to carry the I paint for the rest of the gates, right? Kind of thing. I mean, you can tell like that. You can come with a different approach. What we see is what we are going to understand is whether you have an ability to uh, like kind of forecast, foreseeing, estimate, and kind of a seeing the problem and go a little bit dive into the problem and kind of figure out the facts. Other than that, I have seen some people just say, "I need five days. I need ten days. I need one month." How you come to the? How you come to the answer? No, I don't know. I just feel like no. You what you feel is irrelevant when you come as a software engineer. You need the facts and figures. That's how we solve problems. So therefore, you need to be a little bit detailed. Only thing we are not exact. We are not looking for exact answer. Even though you give, we don't know whether it's right or wrong. What just be looking is how you came to that answer. Did you consider all the facts and all the uh, possibilities where you can face during uh, when you preparing that answer? So if you go that, if you do that at least seventy five percent coverage. So then we know okay when you come to a project, we don't have to worry about it because you are, your thinking pattern is really good. You are thinking uh, all around. So then you may your solutions will be, be something we can count on. Third type of question is kind of a reverse engineering type question. Whether you observe something, whether you can build a hypothesis based on that. For example, there can be a question like, why all uh, manholes are most of the manholes are round? Do you know the manholes, the the holes which in the road like to like telephone cables and everything? So there can be a question like, why most manholes are round? Something like that. You don't know the answer, but you have seen most manholes are round. So now you build a hypothesis. Uh, but looking at that, this can be the reason. So we all just looking at your thinking pattern and how you approach the problem. Other than that, we don't know whether your answer is right or wrong. Now we discuss two type of question. The third type is some conversation type of question. We ask those questions to see your communication skill. Whether you can explain something clearly. Whether you have you are organizing the points to explain something. Whether you are confusing the listener or whether you have some storytelling ability. The questions are goes something like why you want to become a software engineer. Oh, like, uh, what motivate you to become a software engineer? What are you doing to make your dream into reality? What are the things you seeing like in five years time in your life? Or oh, something like, what are your weakness or what are your uh, strength? When someone asks what is your weakness, don't tell like. I'm trusting other people, so they hurt me a lot. So that is my weakness. No, that is an emotional answer. So we are not looking for something like that. You just have to give some some sort of uh, realistic and some sort of a relevant answer. What are the weakness you are seeing in your career, or uh, when you are studying, or when you are working professionally, right? And if we are not asking how weak or how strong when you are in romantic, when you are building your relationship in your marriage life. Oh no, we are not looking for that. We are just asking. In your professional life, in your professional career, what are the strengths and weaknesses you are seeing? So don't give a single type of answers. Like for example, why you want to become a software engineer? Don't say just it's my passion, right? Give an opportunity to the panel to understand your communication ability, right? So because that will open up them to understand you and see how uh, what is your strength and weaknesses in terms of communication skills and so and so. So maybe you are technically bad. Maybe you are not technically well scored. Maybe in the problem solving is not well scored. But they may have open no opportunity to where they can place you because of your your good communicator, right? So use that opportunity as well. 
so now we discuss three categories where you can prepare for this interview most of the intern interviews internship interviews fall into these three categories uh, questions are fall into these three categories and if you make this if you crack this most of the time you get a job so one last thing i need to explain is when you explaining your academic thing when your academic projects and so and so don't just go in a high level take the real use case you have done and explain that use case uh, to the panel other than that like don't have to explain because your project is well well like uh, attractive nice project but you have done, not done anything on that project don't take that project onto the table because you may have a small project not like a catchy or a superstar project like the, uh, the group project or something like that but as long as you have contributed to your project that is the project you should bring into a table and explain because you know each corner of the project so that can build a confident and like kind of a, that can let your panel to feel that you're a truthful person but if you're like getting some project you didn't work but the project is nice and very catchy and attractive no, we, we sooner or later we are going to realize you didn't work on this project. You are kind, kind of like kind of a, uh, like kind of a cheat with us. So that will kind of reduce your marks. So don't do that. So that's all for this video. And I gave so many points you can prepare. So now go back, prepare for next interview, and go and crack the interview. And let me know if this worked for you. So if you need this kind of a tips for a other level of interview, just comment which level you are looking for and what sort of a tips you are looking for. I have done maybe close to 1000 interviews during my career and I have tons of experience by doing those interviews. So let me know what you want to know and I'm really happy to share my experience with you. Then until I see you in the next video, stay safe and take care.